Okay, press the record button. Uh, okay. Yes, you did. Or do you want me to press it? You got it. Okay. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of One Million Cups. I'm glad you guys decided to um, be here this morning. Uh, we have an exciting presentation today, and one of our uh, original members of One Million Cups has come back. Um, here's our picture from last week. Pretty cool picture. Y'all even have me in it, and I wasn't here. It's the week right. before. <laughs> <laughs> um, do me a favor. Uh, if you have a phone or uh, some type of device, uh, we would be happy if you guys checked into the device and let uh, us know that you guys are here, even though we could see you. With one million cups, uh, we get credit for uh, people that show up and we get pretty cool stuff like shirts like this. And you guys see the shirt? Nice, right? And coffee uh, mugs for our presenters. Um, so if you have presented with us, go into Office Evolution and uh, go see John and he'll give you your cup. And Office Evolution is the one that's in Fairfax. Next slide. So we're all about entrepreneurship, community and education. That's why we're here. And every week we get a new presenter in uh, to help them with one of those three topics. Our mission. So our mission here at One Million Cups is to lower the barrier of access to education, resources, and connections of all types of our new and aspiring entrepreneurs throughout the United States. Next slide. Here's our pillars. We like to say that we like do presentations, not pitches, authentic connections, not networking, and we're for the community and by the community. And so this is not Shark Tank or anything like that. We're here to help uh, our presenter today, you know, to provide them some feedback uh, on whatever their issue, opportunity, or challenge is and, and, and help them through those obstacles. So we want this to be a safe and supportive environment. Uh, One, million Coast, uh, One Million Cups is co-owned by all who show up and support. Uh, we believe in radical and intentional inclusivity. And we're all volunteer led. Every last one of the people that supports here are volunteers. And we're few, we're few by our presenter pipeline. So if you ever think about uh, having a business idea or you having a business challenge or you need some type of support, um, apply, you know? I haven't met a business yet that doesn't need help and we're, and we're here and happy to help you. Next slide. So there's several different ways you can follow, follow us. Number one, um, we're live on Facebook. And so for our Facebook community, we would love for you guys to jump on to our Zoom meeting and support our presenter, but we are live on Facebook. Uh, there's ways that you can provide feedback in the chat. We're also on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and our videos get posted on YouTube. The best thing that you can do is engage, engage, engage. We have an amazing, amazing community of organizers with the exception of that guy at the top far left. Everybody else is pretty cool. And uh, we have a, a crew of just great people who love to support and help our community. Next slide. In addition to that, we have ambassadors and our ambassadors are spreading the, the word about one million cups. Um, and if you would be interested in being an ambassador, in fact, we have a couple new. Hold on, let's go back a slide because I just realized that we have a couple new people. So we have Tess uh, is uh, is our new organizer. Thank you, Tess, and welcome to our community uh, of organizers. It's awesome to have you. Let's give her a hand real quick. Next slide. And then we have a new uh, ambassador, John Partridge. So let's give John a, a hand. He's on vacation today. He's on vacation. And so um, 
if our ambassadors are on, please introduce yourself real quick. I saw Gresh. Yes, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Gresham Harkless. Um, I have a company called Blue 16 Media, focused on web design and SEO. Super excited to be an ambassador and part of the community. Um, lots of valuable things that I've gotten from the community and many times that I've presented. So thanks for having me. Outstanding. And I, I believe I saw Reggie on as well. I don't see Reggie on the list. Okay. Anyone else is John? Uh, you said John is not on. And then Tess. Did you get a chance to introduce yourself last week? And if not, please introduce yourself. I'm Tess Rollins. I um, am Chief Creative Cultivator from Simply Enhance. And I am having a great time just uh, getting to know everybody and listening to everybody's ideas. It's really cool. Thank you and welcome. Welcome to the community. All right, so our space sponsor is Office Evolution. Is John here this morning? No, he's not. Why don't you talk about that and also becoming a sponsor? Yes. Yeah, so um, Office Evolution is a co-working space in uh, in, the, in Tyson's Corner. And when we we were in person, that was the location where we met up. They have uh, office space. You can get mailboxes and all kind of great stuff with Office Evolution. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, we'll put you in touch with John. Just say, I'm interested in Office Evolution and uh, we'll make the connection in the chat. Also, if you're interested in being a coffee sponsor, obviously you won't have to buy coffee because um, if you did, you'd have to mail it to all of these wonderful houses today. But all you would need to do is just let us know if you would be interested in being a coffee sponsor and you'll have uh, a month worth of being able to market and advertise your business with 1 million cups. So let us know, put that information in the chat and we'll get back to you. Next slide. All right, so this is a virtual meeting. Um, over the last couple of years, I'm pretty sure you guys been in a ton of virtual meetings. The way that this one works is uh, we want you to make sure that you wave your hand through the uh, hand waving icon, not on the camera. Uh, we, won't, we probably won't see you, but we can see the hand up in the chat. Uh, when the moderator calls on you, please unmute yourself. Um, provide your feedback and then put yourself back on mute. That way it'll give the presenter some time to uh, answer the question. Uh, if there's any questions, let me know. Next slide. All right. So without further ado, we have Carl um, from C C score here. Uh, in fact, Carl was one of, I believe he was either our second or our first presenter. I believe he was our second presenter uh, when we started One Million Cups back in 2018. And so it's so good to have you back and, you know, learn about the growth as well as uh, learn how we could support you this month. And so, Carl, welcome back, and it's so good to see you. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that very much. So C-Score was originally planned as a SaaS offering with the basic premise that you can mathematically quantify the risk associated with a startup or early stage firm. So many of you are questioning that, but in 1989, if I had asked you, could you mathematically quantify consumer risk, you would have said no. And then FICO came out and the credit bureau came out and so on and so forth. So basically C-Score uses objective data as a credit enhancement tool to evaluate early stage firms. Next slide, please. Do you wanna just talk about your question first? Oh, sorry, missed that. <laughs> so because of COVID uh, in 2020, uh, 2020, we had made substantial progress in our MVP for the deployment of our credit enhancement tool to commercial banks. Um, unfortunately, in March, April, those opportunities evaporated as the bank started to concentrate on PPP and other factors. Um, so we pivoted, if you will, at that point to a less SaaS offering and more of an integrated professional services offering. So the old market banking is still viable, but we have pivoted to a new market. So this is me, um, good picture if I may say so. 
Um, 30 year commercial banker, started my career out of Pittsburgh, out of the Marine Corps. Um, I'm son number six of nine boys growing up. The rest of my brothers are CPAs. I'm the only banker. Um, my dad said, be a banker, you'll never get laid off. After my fourth layoff, I said, what the hell? So um, I focused on workouts and restructuring. Um, basically what that means is when a loan defaulted, they would call Carl. I come in and try to salvage that situation for the bank and the client. Um, I started my own tech consulting firm in 2010 um, and I provide fractional CEO, CFO or CSO services to companies up to 100 million in revenue as well as startups. Startups in most cases have strong technical capability, not so much on the sales and strategy side. Um, I've raised multiple uh, rounds of funding for many, many companies. Um, I have current clients in ad tech, cyber security and manufacturing. Um, and I also manage uh, several programs for Accelerator. So you're gonna see a video here. You're not allowed to laugh at it. It is made on Animaker. I did it myself. It is not my core competency. So go ahead. It's nowhere near as bad as you think it is, Carl. I, I cringe a little bit. Uh, Oops, the weekend. Uh oh, sorry. I thought about Hold on. what it means. The I got end of the week. Hold on. What is a week? Okay. Let me just go back. So, there we go. And there we go. So, the video um, attempts to quantify for you the five primary categories. So one of the things the federal government does is use something called TRL or technical readiness uh, level. 
that's on a scale of one to nine. What C-score has done has taken the TRL and changed it fundamentally, including management readiness level, sales readiness level, financial readiness level, corporate readiness level. And we assign mathematical equivalents to different levels of development per category. The secret sauce of C-score lies in its NAICS codes. So as your NAICS code changes, your North American Industrial Classification System changes, the questions on the applications change. So you're evaluating companies based upon their specific subject, not a general one type application for all different types of companies. On one page, we tell you what the risk rating is. We provide specific information. And again, this is designed for a banker or evaluator or accelerator manager, anyone that evaluates early stage firms for the purposes of assessing stage of development and risk. Go ahead, Melinda, next slide. So it's easy to use. It's white labeled focus. You can put your name on it. If 1 million cups wanted to use it, they could use it. Um, it's designed for easy deployment. It's based in the cloud. Um, it has different applications, meaning that you can uh, use it for portfolio management. You can use it for whatever purpose you deem necessary. If your accelerator focuses on a specific subject, you can do so. Next slide. This is the portfolio management dashboard. You can collate companies by their business sector, by their risk environment, by whatever category um, you would like to see as a portfolio manager. Hey, I'm, a, I'm focused on patents. You can make that a requirement for the application. The application is not complete until they upload their patent. Uh, I like to see management resumes. Again, that could be a focus. It really just depends on what you want to see as the evaluator. Go ahead, Melinda. So again, as I mentioned, the primary focus initially was banks, commercial banks. So when I was a younger man, we had almost 15,000 banks in this country. Now we're down to less than 5,000. I think that's a problem. Um, the online predatory lender is not a substitute for a community bank. So what we had originally designed was a credit enhancement tool because small business lending still rejects over 20% of applicants based upon deficient personal credit scores. That's a problem. So because the old market sort of went left with COVID, I pivoted. Go ahead, Melinda. Oops. So what was the pivot? The pivot became a professional services firm offering C-score assessment, but other services. People do not understand how quickly the accelerator incubator economic development agency uh, growth has occurred over the last 10 years. You literally have thousands of incubators and accelerators, as well as economic development authorities across the United States. So what happens when you manage multiple cohorts and then in year two, three, four, five, you're dealing with hundreds of alumni. So the accelerator pivot has worked well for us. We are basically a professional services firm under Corp Expert. Corp Expert provides these services, including assessment, using the C-score model. Next slide. So this is an example of what we provide for companies. Um, an accelerator program will come to us and say, Carl, we need assistance in developing a process for customer discovery, commercialization, dissemination. I have literally dozens of templates that provide this information as a professional services firm. C-score is simply part of that. It makes no sense to provide services to an early stage company or even a company with revenue until you complete an assessment on what their primary competencies are, primary, secondary, tertiary. Otherwise, you're really flailing in the dark. And, and many, much of this, ladies and gentlemen, comes from my background as a workout officer. How many times I would go into companies and I would say, what the hell, excuse me for swearing, why did we make this loan? 
because the lending officer did not look at the other categories that led to the demise or the success of companies. So all of this has come together in C-Score. It is the initial assessment tool that I use. And then I use additional services for accelerators and other, uh, other companies. Go ahead, Melinda. So this is just a, a quick shot of some of the companies that are current clients. Um, in QTEL, many of you may know, uh, originated in 1999 as the venture capital arm of the CIA. Uh, in 2019, they started a new program called IQT Emerge for the purposes of dual use, commercializing uh, federal funding. Um, so I work with them and DARPA on what's called the Embedded Entrepreneur Program. I provide commercialization plans for companies that have received funding. For the Defense Innovation Accelerator, that's actually based here in the Washington area, also known as FedTech, um, I provide everything from curriculum assistance, instructor, um, as well as I run their corporate partnership program. We're actually holding an event uh, in January of next year. So again, commercialization, customer discovery, dissemination, business plans, it all sort of ties together. And then finally, Sprocket is a commercial firm. It's sort of after the accelerator. So once firms receive funding, they have a product. How can I get in front of corporate development at Google? How can I get in front of corporate development or investment at Verizon? Sprocket, um, I was the fractional COO there for several years. Uh, I work with them to provide that service. So where we are today is we're a consulting firm. Uh, we provide professional services to accelerators and again, companies up to 100 million in revenue, fractional CFO. Um, in this case, uh, the client or the customers can take any part of that commercialization plan, uh, but we use the C-score methodology quite a bit in that assessment. Um, so again, what do they want? What does, the, what does this client need? That's what we provide. Next slide. So that's it. Um, thank you for your time and attention. What the goal and objective is now that we supposedly have COVID back um, under control, am I allowed to say that? Um, so what we're looking at is potentially, potentially going out for additional funding to make C-Score a true SaaS platform, but it would require an AI interface um, everything to date has been done manually. We have more than 200 different business sectors written into the program, but it has to be sort of north of 2000. So um, raising capital, uh, getting our act together, dedicating the resources, that's going to be the hard part for getting, um, getting C-Score back on track. And that's all I got. Great presentation, Carl. This is where I jump in as... Uh, facilitating the conversation. I need everybody to, if you can, raise your hand with um, the raise your hand button. But you can also raise your hand and somebody will tell me you're raising your hand. I can't see that because I've got this slide up. Um, well, Ken, just put a question in chat. Carl, what's your score? So um, I'm yeah. just going to say that Ken's probably a little bit of a smart ass. So my response is this. Um, I am strong in certain components of C-score, but what I lack is what I would call financial readiness level. If indeed we are trying to become a SaaS product, I don't have the separate capital necessary. I want to be clear. I've created a nice lifestyle company as a professional services firm, but it is not going to scale. You know, I, I still believe in C-score. I believe that a female minority walking into a community bank should not be penalized because she utilized her credit cards to obtain a business loan. She's going to automatically be looked at negatively because of her personal credit score. Personal credit scores are a problem in small business lending, and people need to be aware of that. So that's a very loquacious response, Ken, but I will say to you, I have a I have a middling, middling C-score. 
I don't see any questions yet, so I'm going to make a while working with you, I came up with some ideas and I'm I'm not going to flood you with them right now, but one of them is to, for you to get out and as, in front of as many people as you can. Do a TED Talk that you can have available that you can play or do several TED Talks. Um, also, promote what you're doing to the media where they'll pick it up and start building social media using that as a tactic to get your voice out there because you can get your voice out to everybody. And maybe there's a um, seminar, a webinar, a Zoom call that you want to do once a week, how to get your business ready and the things you need to do and processes so that people know that you're out there and that they know you're the doctor of all this, that you're the architect who has built this and how it's going to help them with business. Um, I see... I, I yeah, Go I ahead. Go ahead. I, I appreciate that very much, Melinda. Cool. Um, Ken, you're first. It it it's really admirable, Carl, how quickly you pegged me as a smartass. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Um, I apologize for that. Oh, no apology required. I've been insulted worse by better. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm a little confused. Um, so I, I'm interested in some clarification about what you mean by a true SaaS model in your mind. Sure. Um, and the reason is, I think what you're talking about is um, what's called an evergreen uh, program. You, you want some sort of evergreen program that can scale beyond personal consulting. So that, that's one clarification I'm looking for. And uh, did I hear you say that you needed to create an AI front end to gather the information to uh, expand from 200 to 2,000 um, codes, whatever? Sure. It, did I get that right? That's correct. So um, to begin, C-Score was created as a SaaS model, licensed subscription, annual subscription for the purposes of helping banks identify firms that could potentially be approved using a credit enhancement tool. So we were gonna sell it on an annual license basis and expand. Um, that model was, you know, again, um, you know, shifted stage left with COVID. We had, we have an MVP uh, for C-Score. We had six uh, potential subjects. We had several banks using it. Um, one of the uh, companies we had using was, was the ICBA, the Independent Community Banking Association. So we had a lot of momentum going in, in late 2019, early 20, um, and that sort of all went away. So when I say a true SaaS model, what I'm talking about is the ability to scale through word of mouth, through um, you know proper marketing, through licensing. Many of these banks wanted to put their own name on it, white label it. Um, and that's what I sort of want to get back to. Uh, but what I found out was that many of these banks say, hey, could you end up doing this for us? Can you end up doing the underwriting and the evaluation for us? So when I talk about true scaling, it means that I move out of banking and I move into other opportunities and in other industries. Um, as far as the AI uh, part. This falls under the larger heading of reg tech or regulatory technology. It would be physically impossible for me to manually monitor 2,000 business sectors um, and be aware of the changes in compliance and certifications and requirements. Um, so an AI platform that allows somebody to plug in a NAICS code and find out automatically what the latest changes are in that specific NAICS code would be extremely helpful to C score. So that's that's my referral there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a remarkable system. It's really awesome. And um, there's a there's so much in it. I'm it's very, very impressive. Well thank you. I appreciate that. Next we've got Carolyn Mack and then Gresham. Hi, Carl. Thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. I am in slight overwhelmed because I'm not familiar with all of this going on. But there is um, something that caught my attention where you mentioned um, female 
entrepreneurs and how their personal score can affect them getting loans. Um, so my question to you is, which, which group are you attempting to attract by this and which group are you trying to educate with your program? So are you focusing on bankers and getting them to look at scores differently so that they can uh, finance female entrepreneurs, you know, without penalizing them? Or are you looking to educate female entrepreneurs and let them know that you're going to take a hit because of your personal credit? Which side, or are you on both sides? Yeah, so I'm going to say all of the above. Um, this is a top-down, bottom-up approach. So I want you to remember three initials, CRA, Community Reinvestment Act. So if many of you aren't familiar with that, 1977, uh, the US Congress passed a law that prohibited redlining uh, with bankers. You weren't no longer allowed to not make a loan because the zip code uh, had a negative, um, negative reputation. So the redlining within the CRA has greatly expanded it's anticipated, Carolyn, that um, under the Biden administration, the CRA uh, Act will be revisited and uh, how do I say augmented. So banks will be incentivized under their CRA audit to look at firms that have been rejected, to look at investment in communities that have been underserved. So it is my intent to educate bankers on the benefits of this program through CRA but also uh, imagine a website that you can go in as a female entrepreneur or any entrepreneur, put in your information and get a score, sort of like Credit Karma, right? So you need to educate the entrepreneur as to what they lack or what may be deficient in and then how that's gonna be viewed by a banker. But I will say this, the attitude with the bankers are changing. They're starting to look at other, what's called alternative data, C-score wants to be the point of that. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. Next, we have Gresham. Awesome, awesome job, uh, Carl. I think we were connecting a little through email, so great to see you present. Great presentation. Um, one of the questions I had was kind of tagging on what the, Melinda said about um, kind of doing like a, a PR social media push because the other thing I was thinking on and I'm sure I, I assume like you have like the, the pitch of like what number you would need to create a suit, true SaaS model and all of those things but one of the things that I was talking about, thinking about was I, I heard of this site called WeFunder um, which are I know there's multiple sites like that where you're basically crowdfunding investment for you know whatever that might be so whatever that number is just one of the thoughts that I had was one you know using that but also like Melinda said leveraging for one, a lot of the, the PR push, but also the stories on different levels. So whether you're talking about the, you know, the, the minority entrepreneur that may not have realized that they needed this, you know, C-score to be able to get funded, got funded, was able to, you know, build a successful organization, or even the bank that potentially was able to have that, in, you know, that successful investment because they use a C-score. So I think, you know, stories like that, if you already have them, um, to some degree would, you know, provide a great push, but even, you know, just as you kind of touched on that awareness around things that you don't know that will help you to get to whatever that next level is, whether it's investment or even just being more financially sound, I think would be valuable, but um, I think that would be good. And if you have those packaged with, hey, you know, you can invest here or you could join this round of funding or whatever that looks like, I feel like that'd be impactful. No, I appreciate that. One of the things I said to Melinda was, um, I lack the ability to clone myself. So, um, you know, finding the time and the resources necessary. Uh, so right now I'm working with multiple accelerators, uh, multiple projects. Um, I, I have hired a couple of part-time people to help me, um, but you're right. I, I need to do everything that's been outlined. It's, it's really a function of resources. Um, and, and I need to, I need to have that MVP enhanced so that when somebody comes in, like for example, I've completed, if you look at NAICS codes, there are 20 primary NAICS codes, but there are literally hundreds of sub NAICS codes. Um, I don't need somebody pulling out an obscure NAICS code and saying, well, Carl, you don't address this. Um, that's what the AI does. Um, so I have a lot of people that like to do the uh, gotcha game um, hey, Carl, you forgot this. 
So it needs a little bit of work. So can I say I'm suffering from a, a little bit of imposter syndrome um, <laughs> when it comes to this? Um, I know many of us do, but um, for me, this is logic. This is math. Um, I, I, I have to make sure that I'm not expressing any personal biases in the score. Um, you know, that's, that's a real problem, by the way, in AI, and a lot of people aren't aware of that. So there's a lot of things, uh, Gresham, I have to do to, to make sure that my imposter syndrome gets thrown in the closet and, and never looked at again. But I, I appreciate your thoughts very much. Yeah. Can I, can I add one more quick thing too? Sure. Um, even I was just thinking, like you mentioned the MVP, even if it's a simple, like whatever you have, like questionnaire or something like that. And that, after that, you sign up to, you know, join a newsletter or, you know, sign up to whatever that might be. It, it might help out as far as like saying that, hey, we're not here now. Um, and we all have that imposter syndrome, but we're going towards that way. So yeah. um, just a quick thought that popped in my mind. I appreciate it. Now you can use the system now. You can go through the whole thing. It's simply a matter of augmenting the the in my in my view the uh, minimal number of business sectors i have but you're absolutely correct so very quickly i'm just going to throw out a few more things and then we've got three people lined up um the first thing i wrote down to continue what i was saying was chambers and minority chambers but business chambers are really low-hanging fruit the other pieces the sbdc's and then there is a score program out there for entrepreneurs that they execute and also I wrote down setting up, maybe finding champions and ambassadors that can be helpful to you. I'm gonna take John Norse next, Tess after that, Rosemary, and then I'll come back to you, Ken, if that's all right. Hey, thanks, Linda. Hey, Carl, I'm, I'm a small business owner and I'm just trying to understand, and I'm not a tech guy, so understand that, what the value is in to me to you know pay you a fee each month to, or year, whatever the contract would be for the SaaS. What what is it? What is the benefit for me? Ongoing monitoring of our performance. I'm just trying to really understand what I'm getting from my dollar. Yeah, great question, John. Um, actually, there would be no charge to you. So, as a small business entrepreneur, I actually my clients, the paying licensees, are the people who utilize the software. Um, you don't pay for your current credit score. Okay. So you would go in and um, put in your information and you would get a score. The intent is, is that six months or a year later, with the additional capital that you've obtained, whether that's from a private or public sure. source, your, your score is going to improve because you've used that capital to enhance one of the five components. But to be clear, I'm looking for your data. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not looking for your money. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, now it's clearer to me. Okay, got it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tess, Rosemary, and then Ken. Good morning, Carl. Um, I, I am actually interested for a group of women over at Rowan Tree, which is a co-working space in Herndon. Um, there are a lot of women that would actually benefit just from the educational piece because a lot of them some of them started during the pandemic and some of them started just before the pandemic. And um, even these little pieces of information, I, I think that that's where would be a great place to start as far as educating female business owners. Most of them are small business owners that have started. Some of them are now growing um, now that we are transitioning out of the pandemic. Um, but I think that that educational piece, especially for women, and Rowan Tree would be a really good environment, I think, for you to touch in and maybe either do a webinar or um, talk to Amy and Kate. Um, I can introduce you if you don't know them, oh, that, that's um, great. because I think that it is very beneficial uh, for wow. them. Just knowing, just knowing what to do, or th they don't know what those things are. They don't, and a lot of them aren't looking. They're afraid to look for loans. I can, oh, I sure. can tell you that just from conversations because they don't know what they need to bring and they don't know how to improve. So, um, so that educational piece I think is really key. I, you know, I provide um, lectures. I'm based in Herndon myself, Tess, so that's very good. Oh, great. Um, so that being said, <laughs> I do provide lectures and information um, to groups, different groups um, on SBA lending, small business lending. I'm tied into six different community banks in Maryland and Virginia in the district. 
um, so I can facilitate any type of loan conversation. But absolutely, I'd love to connect with you and, and find out more. Sure, I'm I'm probably your neighbor. <laughs> I'm right. I'm okay. at, I actually live in Herndon also, so I'm okay. in Fox, yeah. I'm in, in Fox Mill. Mill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, well I'm in yeah. Fox Mill, so we're very okay. close to each other. I was going to make that match, you guys. <laughs> That's funny. Rosemary, you're next, and then Ken, and then I'm going to go to Danell because I think we're starting to run out of time. Thanks, Melinda. Hi, Carl. Great presentation. I love what you've done here. Um, fantastic uh, approach to helping people on both sides of the table understand the risk. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different tack from talking to bankers and talking to entrepreneurs. I'm going to recommend that you do a little bit of research. You probably already have it and find either PE, VC, or angel groups that have already invested in the kind of complementary technology you need, that you feel you need to finish your SaaS model. Um, I would say you already have an MVP. What you wanna do is get your V1.5, right, over that hump. Yeah. I think you could sell this to them as a tool, sell this to them as a portfolio company, and sell this to them as a complementary portfolio element for their other portfolio companies. Um, so that's one approach. The other approach is seek out angel groups. And I've got a few of them that I can offer to you that specialize either in um, women founders, women executive, women C-suite. So they're usually angel groups. Uh, one of which comes to mind is Citrine Angels. There's another one that's run by Jenny Abramson out of New York. That's huge. Um, and on the other side, find the similar kind of groups that support um, underrepresented communities, especially, um, you know, co-founders of color, women of color. So there's a lot of those um, money groups. They're either, most of them are angel groups. Some of them are PE, some of them are VC. Um, but because you're, you're covering startups to 100 mil, that is a very big slice of the market. Yeah. Um, and I'll, in the chat, I'll give you my contact email. Um, this is a deeper conversation that we can have. Um, I can introduce you to a whole bunch of folks. I think what you've built is fantastic. Um, so why don't we connect afterwards and I'll give you a little bit more. Okay, I appreciate that very much. Two quick comments. Uh, I, I may have misstated my current clients run from startups to 100 million. C scores focused on one to five million in revenue at max. Still so, good. At five million revenue, you're looking at pre seed and seed rounds. And okay. that is very squarely in both VC, Angel, and uh, I won't say PE as much. They're looking more for BC and D round. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at five million ARR, folks are are definitely in a seed round or an A round. Yeah, I've had a number of family offices express interest yeah. in, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to talk to you off, off, uh, off chat. Yep, awesome. Keep up the good work, Carl. Thank you so much. Next we have Ken and then we have Danelle for the last question of the day. So if, if you'll en endure me, Carl, I'd like to throw you a bit of a curve. Sure. Um, it seems to me that you're giving them giving the milk away um, that you might consider focusing some energy on the entrepreneur marketplace and how you can monetize your expertise and your system within that marketplace by selling the service and the idea in my mind for what it's worth is that if your system can create a package to supplement whatever goes to a banker for a loan in a way that would be attractive to bankers, then the entrepreneur has an interest in, um, in your product and an interest in what that product would develop. And on a monthly subscription, you sell the software, there's this huge knowledge um, uh, monetization industry out there where people are um, uh, monetizing their knowledge through online courses, online webinars, Sure. Um, and and so by focusing more on the entrepreneur than on the the capital providers, 
you may be able to enhance your income stream with your existing platform and knowledge. Yeah, you're not far off. I actually do that now, but I do it through financial advisors. So I, I take the premise that entrepreneurs don't have money. So because I take that attitude, I'm actually going to the people that are helping them prepare packages and I'm having some success there. Um, but again, Ken, love your thoughts. We could have a sidebar conversation and I could show you, you know, the, the number of channels I've developed to enhance my, uh, enhance my, um, if, if you check the chat, my contact information to set up a call is in there. I'd be happy to spend more time with you. Um, and we're going to provide you with the chat. So don't worry about finding okay. it now. Okay, great. Yeah. Appreciate that. Danelle, it's your turn for the last question of the day. Outstanding uh, presentation again, and <clears throat> congratulations on all of your success and where you've taken your organization, even through the pandemic. Um, I do want to offer up, uh, I have Veterans Growing America, uh, an organization that supports veteran and military spouse entrepreneurship. And so uh, we can have a conversation about since you are a veteran, um, how you can provide your, your services uh, to our community. So in addition to that, um, my final question is, what can our One Million com uh, Cups community do for you? Well, I, I first want to begin to apologize to One Million Cups for ignoring you for four years. So let, let's just start with that humble beginning. Um, and the reason for that is I think like any entrepreneur, I became too inwardly focused. Um, you know, that being said, I was able to generate contacts all over the country. I need to generate more contacts locally. Um, and just to give you an idea, the Defense Innovation Accelerator is based here in Washington, DC. There are literally hundreds of graduates from that program looking for services, looking for advisors, um, looking for you know people that have been there, done that. I probably should have connected one million cups to them a long time ago, Janelle, and I will do that immediately. So next week you will see an introduction uh, uh, from me to you and the people that run the DIA, the management team there. Um, again, they're looking for advisors. So if Gresham has a, a service he can provide, why not become part of their professional services handbook? Um, I started to put that program together two years ago. So, you know, let me make up for lost time. Um, I appreciate Rosemary's thoughts. I appreciate Ken's thoughts. Um, anyone that you can connect me to, to that you think may be of value on both ends, but hear me out, people. I firmly believe that the people in power, that the people that make these loans, that make decisions, need to have different perspectives. And I think that often gets lost. And uh, it is my goal and intent before I go in the dirt to make sure that that perspective changes. Well, thank you for disrupting the community and, and, and making sure that, you know, they're looking at this thing correctly. What are you laughing at, Ken? <laughs> I appreciate that, Danelle. Well, listen, I, I promise this, more communication. How's that? I love it. I love it. All right. Next slide. So next week. All right. We got David Hillison uh, coming back um, and presenting. So this is going to be this is going to be cool. This is this must be the uh, the comeback tour of all of our uh, presenters <laughs> of the past. This is amazing. Good job, team. All right. Next slide. Danelle, you forget to say that we are looking for speakers, presenters. <laughs> Oh, I, I believe they know. I think we said it like 15 times. Um, I'm going to start picking people and just putting them on. If they don't uh, volunteer to, to speak, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your name and then you'll see your name up here and what day that you'll start presenting. But, you know, with that being said, we are looking for speakers. We have an availability on actually the 20th now. Rowan Tree um, couldn't do it on the 20th. So we have availability uh, starting the 20th uh, going forward. So I know everybody on this call has a business, uh, and I know that everybody on this call has a issue, opportunity, or challenge. What I also know is that you haven't put in your application yet to present, um, and it takes probably around three minutes to do that. 
And so if you can do that by going to the number one millioncups.com forward slash Fairfax and applying to present um, so we can provide you the same type of great feedback that we did for Carl today. And uh, we would love to help you and your organization. Next slide. All right, these are some of our upcoming events. Uh, do we have someone from uh, the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce to talk about any of these? Um, if not, there isn't, we'll... but there, let me quickly point out that they've got an event coming up of theirs and it's a business after business. It's not this week, it's next week and it's at Lost Dog Cafe. And then the other one that we really want to highlight is Karen's event which is on July, um, uh, it's next Tuesday, July 12th, I think it is. Uh, anyway, that's free and it's a Zoom call and it's really good for um, new businesses and entrepreneurs. Outstanding. And I wanna um, highlight my um, event. And so every weekend uh, we have a veteran business pop-up at our pop-up shop in Woodbridge, Virginia in the beautiful Stonebridge Shopping Center. Uh, if you just Google the Apple Store in Woodbridge, we're, um, our, we're catty corner to the Apple Store. You'll see our storefront. It says Veterans Growing America on the outside. And we're gonna be showcase, we showcase uh, veteran and military spouse and dependent owned businesses every weekend uh, until the end of October. So come on out. Uh, you don't have to be a veteran to support veteran entrepreneurs. Uh, but please come on out from 11 to 6 on Saturday and 11 to 5 on Sunday, every Saturday and Sunday until October. So thank you guys for being a part of uh, this event today. Uh, if you're interested in being an organizer, we have a half an hour call every Monday where we discuss all of the great things and the presenters that we have coming up. And uh, it's a great way to connect with the community and be a part of something special. So thank you guys for being here. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming every week. We've been here every week uh, since 2018. Um, as you can tell uh, with Carl today, he's been a part of the, the first one, but he's come back. He was like, you know what? I haven't been around, but he knew that we were back. Uh, here because we're consistent every week and we need your support to to continue to be consistent and we're a Kaufman Foundation organization and we would love to uh, support in your success all right next slide that's it that is it that is it everyone have let me see here let me stop recording and let's take us off Facebook